So I'm going to give you a teaching that was recently helpful in my life. This is actually very recent. And I hope that will be very helpful for you in your life. There's going to be times in your life that there's nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing can help you. That's what you're going to feel. You're going to hit a point in your life where God's not uh, giving you something, when you're actually needing something. Now I want you all to remember this, is that when you feel like God has to answer the prayer at that specific time, and He has to at least show you something, there are those days He's not. He's going to be very silent. So He's not going to show you anything. So I think uh, Chuck, he gave this quote that I think Tom or somebody else posted on the WhatsApp. So you, you all saw that. Uh, why, doesn't, uh, why doesn't God answer me? The teacher is silent when you're in the test. So the Lord, he does things during a testing moment where he's silent. So when you have absolutely nothing in life and you desperately need help, here are several things that can be helpful for you. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. And this is the most obvious thing. It's prayer. You need to pray. If you don't pray, then don't expect any help. Look at Hebrews chapter 4, and we will read verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Yet let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So notice right here in verse 15 through 16, God says to come boldly before the throne of grace. Now, I'll be honest with you. When there were times that I prayed, I had so much confusion, uneasiness, and even bitterness within me that I did not feel right to complain it to God when I pray. You know what I'm talking about? So you feel like that any word that you say will be a disgrace to him. And you don't want to do an irreverence. Yeah. Now, I want you to not misunderstand me here, but I want you to pay attention. God wants you to come boldly before him. Now, think about it. If you read the book of Job and Jeremiah, then they actually said things very boldly to God. So think about this. God, he wants to hear what's in your heart. So don't think of it as irreverence. Don't let the thought of irreverence prevent you from pouring out what's really in your heart. If there's something there's so much you want to say or the bitterness or the anger and stuff like that, let it all out to God. Now, if you don't want to do him irreverence, what I do is this. What I do is, Lord, you know my heart. I don't want to do you irreverence, but I'm going to tell you how my flesh feels, Lord. So this is what's going on in my flesh. I'm not saying this, Lord. I don't want to say it, but I'm going to tell you what my flesh is thinking, what my flesh is feeling, and then let it all out. That is really helpful for you. That's why, that's why they'll have some AA meetings and stuff like that where people just pour out everything. But the thing is this, is that you need to do it to God Almighty. So that why? So that He can hear the exact problem that you're admitting you're facing. And then He can help you more with that specific exact problem. Sometimes you don't even know what the exact specific problem is that you're confused and bitter about. So sometimes it's helpful when you say it in detail so you can know what the exact problems are with you. Sometimes when you're feeling suffering and confusion, you don't know what the problems are. You're just going by a, a hurdle of emotions, and that's what we heard from today's preaching, right? It's all just feeling then, and that's when Satan takes advantage of you. It's better that you organize yourself where you're like, okay, what is it that I'm feeling troubled about? What is it that my wicked flesh and mind wants to scream out. So you say it all to the Lord boldly. And please do not do that with your pastor or anyone here. You can't do that. But the Lord, he understands. See, he knows the exact situation you're going through. All right, so come before him boldly. I mean, look at the book of Job. Look at the book of Psalms. Look at the book of Jeremiah, how they poured out their complaint. Complaint. It actually said complaint to the Lord. And the Lord, he wants it. He wants the real you. That's why. He wants, not, uh, he wants the real you. Open and exposed, naked and bare. That's what he wants, you. Nothing covering. All right. Another thing to understand when you go through life is 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You got to realize this. God gives you enough grace to go through it. So... 
in life, you're going to feel like you don't have enough strength. You're going to feel like you're breaking apart. You're going to feel like, no, Lord, this is my breaking point. There is no way that you can solve this problem for me. So this teaching is specifically when you're at that end, okay? Any of you out there who are, or anyone in here who's at that end point, this teaching's for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, And he said unto me, My grace is what? Sufficient for thee. For my strength is made what? Perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now the second half of that verse you cannot do. That's what's going to happen. You can't rejoice, obviously, when you're feeling that much pain. But the first part, let me tell you, the first half of that verse, you're going to have a trouble even claiming that one too. Because you got to realize that grace does not feel sufficient. You feel like this is my breaking point. You need to do something here, God. But here's the point right here. God does give you grace. You say, no, he doesn't. Well, then why are you still here at church? See, there's something in you that the Lord's still driving you. Can I tell you something? When there's nothing of yourself, nothing of your flesh that can keep you going, it's nothing but the hand of God, the Holy Spirit, without you knowing that kept you alive today, that kept, kept pulling you through. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here today. Otherwise, you wouldn't be hearing this online watching. Why are you still listening to preaching and teaching? See, God gives you grace. You just don't know it. So this is important to understand. He gives you grace, but you don't know it. That is important to understand. In life, you hit that breaking point, and you feel like there's no more grace left over. But guess what? You're still going. You're still breathing. The Lord still puts circumstance situations in your life that where it didn't tear you apart yet. So you got to remember this. He does give you grace to go through it, but is sure don't feel like it, and you won't even know it. So all you can do is just keep going on. That's it. So with that feeling of misery, pain, guilt, depression, you don't know what to do, all you can do is just take one step forward again and one step forward again. I mean, if that's what you're doing right now, right? Otherwise, why are you still alive? You would have ended it a long time ago. So remember this. He's going to pull you through. Otherwise, you still wouldn't be here today. Another thing to understand, this is extremely helpful. Everyone knows this verse. What is this verse? That's right. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. All things work together for good. What helped me many times in life is that I don't know how the current situation is going to work out for good. But I do have peace. Here's something to understand. If you really have faith in this promise, during the midst of your trial, you will feel hurt, you will feel confusion, but there will be a little bit of peace mingled in with that. I don't know if some of you know what I'm talking about if you've been through that. But there is some sort of peace. You know why? Because of this verse. Because you know God's going to work it out. So if you really, uh, so this thing will help you throughout the moments where you're absolutely nothing. And I mean nothing, nothing. God's not intervening. There's nothing going on. No one in the church is helping out. Absolutely nothing. This thing will give you peace. And when I mean peace, that doesn't eliminate the pain that you're feeling. It's going to be a mingled feeling. It's going to be a mingled feeling. But God puts a little bit of that peace. Why? So that you can keep on going. And thus his what? Grace still pulls you through. But remember, his grace is not just the peace. It's all combination of factors that I can't tell you. Why are you still alive? I don't know. The Lord did something. You don't even know. So the thing to understand is that you got to claim Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good. His grace will pull you through. And you got to pour it all out to the Lord. Now, if you're at that point of nothing, an absolute nothing, and you want to end everything, and you don't know what to do, another thing to understand is this, is that what God will do is that you're going to understand it when you look behind you. That's what's going to happen. You don't know now. Look at Hebrews 11.
do you really believe that pastor what you're writing yes I do because I've been through this so the thing is this is that you definitely do not know now but you will know later I promise you will know later that's why we walk by faith what pulls you through through those moments of trial and affliction is definitely faith and trust me faith will waver faith will feel small faith will be attacked but you still have faith that pulled you through look at Hebrews chapter 11 look at verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen faith pulled through all these saints look at verses 4 all the way to the end almost all these saints are mentioned they won through faith they won through faith but look what the Bible says look at verse 39 and these all having obtained a good report through faith received what not the promise see God's not answering now he's not showing you something now look at verse 40 God having provided what some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect you know why he doesn't answer now because he has something better and I'm going to say this I want to thank God I want to thank God that what he pulled me through that it actually made me a better person as a minister if there's anything that I did well in teaching or preaching or pastoring it was definitely not of myself it was because of what God put me through in that trial and affliction and then he turned me into a better person as a result and I and it clicked in my head it'll come like a light bulb in your head months later years later and then you're gonna go why didn't I see that before when I was going through affliction that's what faith is faith is you don't see it now we walk by faith not by sight that's what faith is so you don't know now but you're gonna know it later and another thing about faith which is very important in life when you go through struggles you don't see an answer and you're not gonna have the answer to the problem you know what's going on when you go through nothing what do you want this is what you want what you want is an answer to the problem do I know the answer to my problems now well when I went through my problems when I went through my problems I did understand later how the Lord made it better but guess what there were still certain situations I don't have an answer and I still have that feeling where God I don't know why you never answered my prayer on that one I don't know why you said that was grace but it sure didn't feel like that so this one's very important you know what this is this is faith if you think that in your life you're gonna get an answer to all your problems you are very gullible there will be things in life you will never have an answer can I repeat that again this is important otherwise you're gonna get bitter you're gonna commit suicide you're gonna run away you're gonna do something very crazy there's not going to be an answer to that specific problem even till the day you die first Corinthians chapter 13 for we only know in part that's what the Bible says but when we see God face to face now I know even as also I am known that's faith faith is uh, you just trust in God whatever he does is the best so what can I say I'll tell you one thing all I'll tell you one thing I believe whatever God does is best Amen. and those particular situations I don't have an answer for but I believe it's best that's faith because if God gave you an answer to every problem God gave you an answer to every argument against evolutionists and atheists God answered every prayer that you had God did miracles in front of your eyes all the time you would walk by sight yeah. you would walk by evidence not by faith yeah. in some you know how my faith held strong to God? Well, it's hard to hold on to faith. No, it's not. How many times has God proven himself to you? Amen. Yeah. Can't you trust him now on one or two or a few things he left unanswered? Yeah. Yeah, that's, good. that's what you need to do. So when there's absolutely nothing in life, these things will be extremely helpful for you. And I promise you this, there is a little bit of peace mingled in with that. 
God's grace will pull you through and you won't even know it. And God is currently working out behind the scenes while you're crying. He's shouting behind the scenes, I'm going to work this out even better for my glory. And not only that, you will always remain confused. That's important to understand. You will be confused. You don't have an answer. No answer. But God is not the author of confusion, amen? So what you need to do is replace that confusion with faith. Faith. That gets rid of the confusion. I will always remain confused and don't know why the Lord will do it. But whenever I have faith, Lord, I just believe that it's going to work for good. The confusion dissipates and it's gone. Because yeah. all I'm thinking in my head is, God's going to work it better. God's going to work it better. That's all I'm thinking in my head. Not like, oh, how is this problem going to work and to rectify to that situation? And I don't know how God's going to work that for good. And, you know, it sure doesn't mean it's working out for good. It looks like God is sinning right here and I don't get it. When you do that, you'll... My ways are not your ways, God says. My thoughts are not your thoughts. You're trying to comprehend God's mind. Stop. That's the best advice. Just stop. Mm 